Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for making time for this session. My name is Fan Zhao, and I'm supporting the PyTorch engineering team at Intel. I'm based in China, so uh, I'm super excited to be able to fly here and meet with everyone in person, thanks to PyTorch conference. Today, I'm going to talk about Intel's vision and efforts in enabling AI everywhere with ubiquitous hardware and open software, like PyTorch. What is AI everywhere? To me, it means that I don't need to worry about housekeeping while I'm here this week, because I have a robot vacuum which will clean my house every day without complaining. Today, we have seen AI in many different industries as what this picture shows. But there's still a lot more to do to bring AI to every use case, every device, and every person. Like for me, even though I'm super happy with what AI can do to clean up my house, I wish it can do more to coach my daughter with her homework, because that's something that really drive, drives me nuts. How can we get to AI everywhere? Um, so um, as we know that AI is successful today, primarily due to three reasons, data, algorithms, and compute. Intel is in a unique position to provide compute through a full spectrum of hardware all the way from client to edge to data center. In data center, we have like the young processors as a foundational platform, and we continuously infuse AI features in the young to make it good for workloads which mix general compute and AI compute. We have Habana GoD2, which is designed for a dedicated deep learning cluster and generative AI. And we have the data center GPUs, which accelerates medium and uh, HPC and AI. In client, we bring CPU, GPU, and NPU together to enable high performance and broad compa compatibility to bring AI to PCs at scale. So we are really infuse AI in every of our product, and um, we are truly focused on unlocking the AI continuum. So what makes the hardware meaningful is the software. So the open ecosystem is inherent in Intel's strategy, and we believe deeply in the power of open source community. AI is no difference. We truly believe that a vibrant open ecosystem is critical for AI innovation, security, responsibility, and ethics. What I put on this page, definitely not a full list, but just some examples of open source projects that my team contributes to, to ensure that the users of PyTorch and this libraries and uh, models are able to get out of box experience and highest level of performance on our hardware portfolio. Here are some um, proof points in the generative AI workloads. I'm not going to read all the details here. So we have a demo booth, and I highly encourage you to drop by, and my colleagues will show you some cool stuff there by running generative AI on laptops and data center CPUs, GPUs, and GoD2. And the common thing between them is that all of them are powered by PyTorch and the open ecosystem around PyTorch. Intel has a long history working in the PyTorch community. In this summer, we joined PyTorch Foundation as a premium member, and we are delighted to work with the other partners to accelerate the development and democratization of PyTorch. We have four engineers working as the maintainers of CPU and compiler modules of PyTorch. And I believe uh, many of you may have engaged with them at GitHub, and feel free to report back to us. Um, and um, Intel is one of the top corporate 
contributors for the PyTorch code base. For PyTorch 2 stack, uh, we send a lot of optimizations and advance the performance of the Torch inductor CPU backend. And we also maintain an out of tree open source Dynamo backend called IPEX. Well, we uh, staged some additional optimizations for CPU and also provide the GPU support there. So going forward, we will definitely continue our contribution and advance PyTorch as a good hardware agnostic layer for developers to travel across different hardware backends easily. With that, I'm wrapping up my talk and let's work together to bring AI everywhere. Thank you. <laughs>